thank you so much for coming back to the channel. And I want to thank all of our new subscribers. And those of you who are clicking like, leaving comments, thank you. That encourages the team here so much. Well, I was in Florida last week for, I don't know, five days, and I got so relaxed on that little getaway, that little vacation that I had a hard time getting back to work. And I was having so much fun studying and, oh my goodness, I have so many lessons planned. They're in my head floating around, but now the work is to get a video made. And so I had to muster up the courage to get before the camera again. And so I appreciate all of you for coming to the channel and extending such grace to me as I'm putting together these videos for you. Well, today we're going to talk about the mystery of the seven stars and the seven lampstands. And I was absolutely riveted in my study of this. And this one video is not going to cover it all, of course, but I'm hoping that it will intrigue you enough where you will get started and do a lot of studying on your own. So I'm just gonna kinda share some of our team's percolations here and get you going on your own study. So it's, I wanna start out in Luke chapter eight, verse 16. Jesus says, now, no one after lighting a lamp covers it with a container or puts it under a bed, but he puts it on a lampstand so that those who come in may see the light. Well, that word lamp is the Greek word luknos. It's portable, a, an illuminator, a candle. And the lampstand is simply a candlestick. Okay, well, what we learn here is that candlesticks do not have any light of their own. It is lit lamps that provide illumination. Well, every believer is a portable lamp. The important thing is that you are a lit lamp. If you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you are sharing the scriptures with people and you are illuminating them. John 5 verse 35, it speaks of John the Baptist. So that's John chapter 5 verse 35, King James Version. He was a burning and shining lamp, and you were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. Well, that word burning, it means to set on fire, kindle, consume, burn. Well, now let's talk about how a lamp gets lit. Look at Jeremiah 23, 29. God says, is not my word like fire, declares the Lord? Okay, that is an important detail. What this tells us is that as we carve out time in our schedule every day, throughout the day, and we get into God's word and we spend time thinking about his word, asking him questions about his word, praying and asking for the answers, that is how you abide in the word. Well, also, what we're noticing, how to get our lamps lit, which is so important, we're going to get into Revelation now. Revelation chapter 1, and I'm going to read verses 12 through 14, New American Standard Bible. So the Apostle John says, Then I turned to see the voice that was speaking with me, and having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And in the middle of the lampstands, I saw one like a son of man, clothed in a robe, reaching to the feet, and girded across his chest with a golden sash. His head and his hair were white like wool, like snow, and his eyes were like a flame of fire. All right. In this passage of three verses, we notice that only lampstands are mentioned. There are no lamps mentioned. However, in the middle of the lampstands, John saw one person. His eyes were a flame of fire, and that word means lightning. So how do you get your lamp lit? You abide in God's word every day, be in God's word, and you wait on him. What do I mean by that? As you are studying the word, prayerfully reading the word, thinking about what you're reading, take time. 
This is not just your quick verse of the day or a devotion of the day. No, it, this takes time. You want to be in the presence of God and you want to wait on Him and talk to Him and fellowship on Him and you want to repent and ask Him to search out your heart for sin and think about things that maybe were unpleasing to Him. But it's all a process. And as you do this, Jesus is watching you. And what we want is for Him to set His gaze on us. We want Him to look at us. We want to see Him face to face. Why? Because His eyes are a flame of fire. You are a lamp. And now, through this process, you're getting your lamp filled with the Holy Spirit. You're asking God to pour out His Holy Spirit on you, to fill you afresh today. Because you used yesterday's oil with yesterday's activities. So we need to be filled anew with the Holy Spirit of God in our lamp. All right? So we want Him to gaze at us. You know what this makes me think of? When you take a magnifying glass and you go out in the backyard and you let the sun shine through that magnifying glass onto leaves or some paper or something, and it will burn a hole in that paper. Well, this is what we want. This is the analogy that we want to think about. We want our lamps lit. This is so important. We're going to learn why. The Apostle John saw these lampstands in heaven, not on earth. But our lit lamp brings illumination to others on the earth. Listen to what Matthew 5:16 says. Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. So you see, we are to let our light shine. Now, non-believers are lamps as well. And they are fulfilling the agenda of the dark team. But we are fulfilling the agenda of our Father, the light team. Okay, let's go on in Revelation. Look at Revelation chapter 1, verse 20. John saw Jesus in heaven, and he heard him say, As for the mystery of the seven stars which you saw in my right hand, and the seven golden lampstands, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands are the churches. All right, so now this is one of the scriptures where Jesus is teaching us that stars are angels. That's why we're not to be worshiping the stars, paying attention to the stars, getting our horoscope from the stars. Now, that's called astrology. It's fine if we want to engage in astronomy, the science of stars. But when we start predicting future events or our, our day or our life by the stars, or when we see an alignment and we start thinking, oh, something good is going to happen on that day, or oh, something bad is going to happen, or oh, we're entering a bad season because there was just an alignment. Okay, that's when we cross that very fine line between the science of astronomy and witchcraft, which is astrology. And so the enemy always is trying to lead God's people into astrology because then he knows it opens a door for the enemy in our lives. Okay, so Jesus told us outright in Revelation 1.20 that stars are angels and lampstands are churches. Okay, Revelation 1.17 John says, When I saw him, I fell at his feet like a dead man, and he placed his right hand on me, saying, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. Okay, I want you to notice the hand that Jesus was holding the seven stars with, that's the hand he touched John with. Okay, this was a deliberate act by Jesus. 
So Jesus was holding seven stars, seven angels in his hand. John fell at his feet like a dead man. Okay, what is the Holy Spirit communicating? Jesus puts the hand on John that he was holding the seven stars, the seven angels with. Okay, this is big. Meaning, Jesus lit the apostle John like a lamp because people are lamps. So also in this verse, Jesus identified himself as the one who lights lamps. Therefore, abide in his word. Jesus is the word. The word is Jesus. You cannot separate the two. The word of God is the living. The word of God is alive. All right. Now, we opened this study with Luke chapter 8, verse 16. Let me repeat this. Now, no one, after lighting a lamp, covers it over with a container or puts it under a bed, but he puts it on a lampstand so that those who come in may see the light. So Jesus lit the apostle John. John's lamp was now lit. And you notice, in Luke 8, 16, Jesus says, after lighting a lamp, I'm not going to cover it with a container. I'm not going to put it under a bed. Well, what does a bed refer to? A sleepy Christian or a sleepy church. So God is not going to light a lamp and put it in a container or put it under a sleepy Christian or a sleepy church, but he's going to put it on a lampstand so that those who come in may see the light. So that's those who come into faith in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, as the forgiver of their sins, as the one who shed his blood for them so that they can start being illumined, so they can start understanding, so they can begin growing. And this growing process occurs throughout our entire lives, regardless of, of how long you've been a Christian. There's always new glorious things to learn about the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, how they work together, the kingdom of God. So Jesus is the one in Luke 8, 16, who lit the lamp and put it on the lampstand. But what's interesting is we don't see lampstands on earth. They are in heaven. Let's talk about the two witnesses because they are part of this mystery. Both of them will be lamps on earth when they come on the scene. However, in heaven, each one of them is seen as a lampstand standing before the Lord because lampstands are in heaven before the Lord. Look at Revelation chapter 11, verse 4. These are the two olive trees and the two lampstands that stand before the Lord of the earth. So they are on earth witnessing and they're Jewish. They're two olive trees. They're Jewish. And they're ministering on earth with very lit lamps, yet their lampstands are standing before the Lord up in heaven. Now, our channel has proven in many videos through many scriptures that after the pre-trib rapture of the bride, the believing portion of Israel is going to be grafted back into the church per the book of Romans. The believing portion of Israel will include the two witnesses and the 144 sealed Jews. They will wake up the sleepy church and together they will fulfill the Great Commission and bring in the main harvest of other Jewish and Gentile Christians, transforming them into the one new man. Then the church will be raptured at mid-trib as recorded in Revelation chapter 12, verse 5, which is a mid-trib passage. Every member of the church will be placed on their lampstand. Jesus provides the church with a warning, however. 
Look at Revelation chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. The one who holds the seven stars in his right hand, the one who walks among the seven golden lampstands, says this, I know your deeds and your toil and your perseverance, and you have endured for my name's sake. But I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Therefore, repent and do the deeds you did at first, or else I am coming to you and I will remove your lampstand out of its place. Now you see, God can do this because the lampstands are all before him, standing before him in heaven. He'll remove that lampstand. So repentance is key here. Now, a raptured, resurrected lamp, lit lamp, will be placed on their own lampstand in heaven. When Jesus talked about lighting a lamp and where it goes, he gives us a little more information. Luke 11, verse 34. The eye is the lamp of your body. When your eye is clear, your whole body also is full of light. But when it is bad, your body also is full of darkness. Now, connect this with 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19. So we have the prophetic word made more sure, which means stable, to which you do well to take heed as unto a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star arises in your hearts. We're after this. We want to be ever increasing in light so that we can have more of an effect on the earth with our loved ones and those we come face to face with as we travel throughout the day. All right. This is going to take another video, but I hope this gets you going. I hope that you are seeing some new things you perhaps had not seen before. Again, I think this is fascinating, and I hope you do too. So thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you later. Bye!